So photography can be fun and is a passion for a lot of people. So if you're looking to do more than just have a little bit of fun and if you wanna make some money with it, you also need to treat it as a business. So the hustle is up to you on how you decide to make the money. There are so many different ways and I'm gonna go break it down for you guys and I'm gonna give you guys 10 different ways that I've been able to make money for the photography. So I'm not gonna to go too in depth, but I'm gonna talk about all the different ways that I've been able to use these ideas to become profitable with my passion. One thing that I will stress is that if you want to apply this to your photography, you need to treat it as a business, right? Because that's what it is now. Um, now, you to start a business based on your photography, you need to look for things that you have a co competitive advantage in. Um, so these things will make you stand out from others in your space. Um, do you know your area very well? Uh, secret spots to go shoot. Do you play sports? Do you have access to fields? Do you like to go boating and have friends with boats that you can go and take a boat out and do a photo shoot on? You know, we all have these things that we excel in. So try to apply some of those things and you'll find yourself ahead of the game and ahead of the competition. This will make for the perfect opportunity to make money with your photography. So the first one that I'm going to go over is real estate photos. So anytime a house is listed on the MLS or any of these different websites, they're going to need photos for it, right? So this is pretty a pretty easy industry to get into. So all you got to do is find real estate agents who you know are going to be selling homes in your area and offer your services to them. You know, go into the homes, be professional, be creative, show them some of the pictures that you've taken. You know, they're there are some ins and outs on how to shoot these photos when you go um, into the homes. And I found the resources on YouTube have been a great place to learn and become inspired to think outside of the box. The, the first ever job that I took on as a photographer was to go and photograph a home with a boat, uh, boat slip on the canal. So remember that competitive advantage that I was talking about? Well, I have a boat. So I took it out and I got some photos that you could only access from the waterway. This took my services to a different level and I was able to impress the client who insisted that they pay me more than my asking price. With this in my portfolio, now I have been able to land photo shoots for big developments in my area and I have some of my photos on billboards being used as their advertisement. It's pretty cool when you get to drive down the road and you get to drive by something that you created every day. So number two is tried and true wedding photography. Everybody knows that this is a way that you can make money with uh, photography. This was the method that yielded me the most income when I was out on the streets with the camera in my hand. So I'm not going to go too, I'm not going to get too into it, but this is a very, this is very, very lucrative, especially if you have a network of people who are going to get married. And I found that word of mouth is the strongest marketing tool that I've, that I could ever ask for. So if you're a very social person, you probably know a ton of people who are getting married and it can be very easy to grow your business. If you have that network around you and you use that at to and you use that to your advantage. So another option too is that you can also network with other photographers in your area and become a second shooter for them. So now that's not going to pay you as well, but you will have far less work to do. So all you have to do is show up on that day, take some great photos, hand over those files, and you're done. You get paid. So number three is going to play right into the wedding photography, and that would be engagements. So if you have a network of people that you know who are getting engaged, getting married, it's very easy to grow this business. People are going to always be getting engaged. And now with social media being as popular as it is, people want to share their engagement photos online. So you can be that photographer who creates those epic photos that everyone is talking about. You can be that guy. So number four would be proposal shoots. You know, same thing as wedding and engagements. So I've been contracted out to do a um, couple different proposal shoots where I've got to be you know, hiding in the background and they want to do something neat or cool to propose to their future fiance. So these can be fun and very lucrative, but you also have to make sure that you know, you're on your game because you can only get the shot once. You, know, you only get one chance at it. And sometimes it happens you know, quick. Sometimes it happens when you least expect it. Even if you plan it out, the best coordinated shot, that nervous person who's actually going to be doing the proposal is going to pull that trigger whenever they feel comfortable to do it. So whether that's sooner than you expected or it's going to be a little bit later, you have to be ready. You can't look like you're ready. You can't be walking around with a, with a camera lens right on them because you know they're going to know what's up. 
So number five, number five is going to be family portraits. Uh, one of the great things about family portraits is a business is very easy to get a high churn of clients, meaning that you can work with one family. They're going to share your work online and they're going to tell their friends like, hey, I worked with, you know, Joe as my photographer who was really good and really professional. You should use them. So when you so you can get more clients that way. You see families, no, uh, no other families, and it's really easy to market yourself as a family photographer if you do good work. So the same thing applies for graduation photography. People who are graduating high school, graduating college, make for great clients because of the potential of the word of mouth marketing. We all know that the younger crown has a much larger presence on social media. So you become that photographer, right? You know, that that guy that created Sally's epic graduation photo. She's gonna post them all online, she's gonna rave to her friends, and they're all gonna wanna reach out to you because of you and your craft. And obviously that one person who's graduating knows so many other people who are graduating as well. So if you do a good job with that, you can get all kinds of clients this way. You can also apply this to baby and newborn photography. I'll give you guys this little tip that I've used in my business and I've really found that you can really make a connection with a client and become more of a friend than somebody that they hired. It'll go a very long way. Um, there are many cases where this has really generated so much more work for me. I'll start out shooting somebody's engagement photos and then they'll want to hire me on as their wedding photographer. And then in the following year, guess what? They're having a baby. So they need newborn photos. So they'll hire me out for that. You know, and they would get up with me later on down the road if they want some family photos. And then even later on down the road, there's his graduation pictures again. So my philosophy is to build a client for a long term rather than having a client as just someone for the here and now. So number six would be setting up a photography workshop. So maybe you're someone who's seasoned in wedding photography, family shoots, portraits in the sand, whatever it may be. Um, how to get good photos at a certain location. So you can sell that workshop package to people who are also interested in these. Uh, one great thing about these workshops is you really only have to find a small group of people who are interested in the thing that you have that expertise in. As a new photographer coming in, it's very difficult and intimidating to think about going to these new places or taking on new business ventures or, or shooting different shots. But when you as a professional give them that information in a workshop, that gives them the confidence to, to go out and, and to get those pictures that they, that they really wanted to. Um, so you can have them come to wherever you live or meet them in a certain place. And that's where you can teach them all the ins and outs for everything that they hired you for. Once they have that information and they trust you and they've seen that it works, they're going to come back to you time and time again. So number seven is going to be corporate headshots. All you have to do is find somebody who works in a corporate business and offer up your services. You know, just say, hey, I bet everybody here needs a new LinkedIn photo. Or I bet everybody here needs to update headshots for their website or for the badges or for their email signatures, whatever it may be. There's a whole plethora of different uses for headshots. You can tell them I can do it for X, Y, and Z cost and what your availability is. So once you land that client, all you have to do is go set up your backdrop, set up your lighting, and you can just file people in and out, make their headshots for them, boom, you're done. So number eight is going to be corporate events. I've done this so many times. Um, essentially, corporations will have these events that sometimes are sponsored, so they're going to need recap photos. So all you have to do is find an advertising agency or a corporate agency um, that works with these brands, and they put on these events. Uh, maybe it's an event planning agency. Um, it doesn't matter. You can be the photographer to create all the recaps for all these events and make money that way. Typically, this is like the same rate as doing a wedding, it's like doing wedding photography or something like that. So I found these jobs from word of mouth and I've also found them on places like Craigslist and Facebook. Uh, when corporations or colleges or large facilities are looking for a photographer to document an event, um, that's where they're gonna post that information. And, and the information is out there. Sometimes you just have to kind of go digging for it. All right, number nine is going to be something that's relatively new to me, but has yielded me quite a bit of money in the past few months. So I freelance my services out to a couple of different websites, and in particular, Fiverr has been very profitable for me. So I've marketed myself out as a wedding and event photo editor. So most of my clients have come to me or 
Most of my clients that have come to me are people who are either photographers themselves and who are backlogged with weddings and they need somebody who can edit these for them, edit their weddings for them in a timely fashion and to their style. Or I have had some brides come to me and say, hey, my wedding photos are terrible. Can you help me fix them? So now these clients are going to be a little bit tricky to do with because, you know, they're kind of sensitive as it is, but anything that you can do to make their photos better is going to be gold in their eyes. You know, I've gotten entire weddings that are underexposed. The focus is off. Um, I even had one event where the ISO was locked at 12,500 for every single photo that I got. The noise was insane, but I was still able to edit their photos and get them to a better place than they were when they started. And the clients were so happy with me after this. So this is one of those that I'm going to keep exploring a little bit and I'm going to report back. So number 10 is going to be YouTube and you can be just like me here and create YouTube videos centered around your photography. Um, for me, it's going to be tips on photo editing, teaching others how to use the tools that they have, tech reviews for the equipment um, that you're going to need for all kinds of events and everything in between. So YouTube is a search engine and when people have uh, questions, they're going to come here for how to's and the answers to what they're looking for. And I mean, that's what kind of brought you to this video, right? So now once you've met YouTube's requirements, you can make money via AdSense from running ads on your videos. So another great thing about having YouTube videos up is that these videos stay up forever. You know, even years after you've posted it, you know, it'll still be there generating revenue for you. So now there, there are other ways that you can uh, make money with your videos on YouTube, such as affiliate marketing, but I'm not going to get into that too much. There's plenty of other videos out there um, and maybe I'll make one later. Um, about that but what that is is you would link a product from someplace like Amazon and you would get paid commission every time somebody clicks on that link and buy something from there and you're gonna get a little bit of a cut all right guys so there are ten different ways that you can make money with your photography and it have worked for me and I hope you got some ideas and you got the wheels turning in your head on how to make some money moving forward with your passion and if you guys have any different ways that you've used or ideas that you have, please drop them down in the comments below. I would love to hear other ideas and other things that I could do to make my passion work for me. Look, I appreciate you watching. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.